will show you how my obstacle avoider works. I have kept a threshold value of 10 and a speed for my motors of 120. So as you can see, there is nothing in the way of the obstacle avoider. So it just travels straight. But now it sends this wall and hence it took a turn. Let's try it once again. Okay, so here's what you need to build your very own obstacle avoider. The first thing is of course your motherboard. So I'm going to quickly grab my motherboard. I've got my Bluetooth on it and six ports that can connect to any of my sensors and actuators. Two motor ports to connect my motors. The next thing I'll need are motors. So I'm going to build my obstacle avoider on two wheels. So here I've got two wheels and two motors. I'm quickly going to plug in the motor into my wheel like this. Once you've done this, the last thing to look for is a sensor. For this project, I'm going to use the ultrasonic sensor. So here's my ultrasonic sensor and this is what it would look like. The ultrasonic sensor would act like eyes for the obstacle avoider. It will help it calculate the distance between itself and any obstacle and then it can decide whether to turn or to keep going forward. To connect my ultrasonic sensor, I have an RG cable. Now I have all I need. Let me start connecting. So, quickly grab your motherboard and the RG cable. Slip in one end of the RG cable into your ultrasonic sensor and choose any of the six ports on your motherboard. I'm going to choose port number 1. Slip in the RJ cable onto your motherboard. Make sure you wait for the click sound to make sure your connections are tight and secure. Now grab your motors and slip them in to port number M1 and M2. There you go. I'm done connecting. Now let's go ahead and build an app. Now, to start building your app, log on to www.stemdesi.in and start designing. The first thing to do is of course add Bluetooth connectivity. So I'm quickly going to drag and drop a Bluetooth client and add a list picker called Connect. Once you've done this, go ahead to the palette on the left. Can you see Cutie Pie Mega Blocks? Right. From that section, drag and drop two DC motors. Go ahead to the properties on the right side and give them Bluetooth connectivity and port numbers. Now head back to the Cutie Pie Mega Block section and drag and drop an ultrasonic sensor Mega Block. Make sure you give it a port number and Bluetooth connectivity. After you've done this, don't forget to drag and drop a notifier. Drag and drop a notifier onto the screen. Done. Let's go ahead and program this app. To start programming your app, check the backpack on the top right corner of your screen. I'm quickly going to drag and drop the Bluetooth connectivity blocks from my backpack. So here's my before picking block and here's my after picking block. Once I've done this, I'm going to program the ultrasonic sensor and the motors. Now, every time my ultrasonic sensor detects a distance which is lesser than the distance that it can maintain from any obstacle, I'm going to ask it to take a turn. So here it is. I'm going to program both my motors to rotate in the same direction but I'm going to change their speeds. So if I want it to turn, it's going to turn at 150 on one motor and 255 at the other motor. Since one of my wheels will be slower than the other, my bot will be able to take a turn. 
And now check out this block. This block is something you would have seen before. Here, I'm moving both my motors at the same speed in the same direction. This means my bot moves forward. And here's the third block. Here, I've given a speed of zero and a direction of true. This would make my bot stop. Now let's see how we can do this along with the ultrasonic sensor. Quickly grab the on distance change event from the left panel of your ultrasonic sensor. Once you've done this, go ahead and grab the if then else block. Now here are two things that I'm going to explain to you. The first thing is a checkbox. During designer, if you'd like, you can add a checkbox onto your screen. So, every time the checkbox is checked, your obstacle avoider will be on. Otherwise, it'll be off. So, I'm quickly going to check if my obstacle avoider is on. That means it is equal to true. If that's true, I'm going to go ahead and grab another if-then-else logic block. Now, I'm going to grab the get distance procedure from the ultrasonic sensor. This will help me get the distance of the closest object from the ultrasonic sensor. I've used a slider in my designer to go ahead and set a distance. Your obstacle avoider needs to maintain a minimum distance from itself and any obstacle. If you'd like to vary this distance during the obstacle avoider's path, then you can use a slider. Otherwise, you could also grab a text element and just add a hard-coded number. I've used a slider here. So, if the distance between my ultrasonic sensor and any object is lesser than my threshold value or the value on my slider, I'm going to make it take a turn. Remember this block turns my obstacle avoider? Because both of the wheels are going at different speeds. If that's not true, my obstacle avoider is just going to move forward. Now, we're done with this block. Let's go ahead and program the else for the checkbox block. If the checkbox is true, we need to program this section. If it is false, we need to program this else. So if the checkbox is not checked, that means my obstacle avoider is simply off. And hence, the speed is zero and it's at a halt. There you go. This is how you can program your obstacle avoider. Once you've done this, go ahead and save and build your app.